Hello guys, this is Chirodip once again and you are watching Pink Framework tutorial series and in this tutorial we are going to understand uh, what Spring Factory Bin is and also understand some of the concepts that are fundamental to Spring because um, before writing or working on Spring Framework you need to understand what Spring Factory Bin does and what it uses actually. I have talked about the concept of dependency injection in my first tutorial of this series and uh, the whole dependency injection concept is possible because Spring is actually a container of bin and Spring behaves as a factory of bins. Now what is mean by container? Let's check it out. Here uh, you can see that uh, now take an example of a servlet container to mean that uh, Tomcat is a servlet container and what does that mean? Tomcat creates the servlet object which are required in order to run an application. So you would see a deploying application what you would do is you would uh, configure all the servlets in a XML and you will supply the classes what Tomcat does is. It reads the XML and it identifies what are the servlet that needs to be instantiated and it creates those servlets. Spring is also similar. It is a container that you can see I have defined one spring container here and uh, it is a container actually and uh, the container of servlets but it's a not a container of it's a container of bin it's not a container of servlet like Tomcat is. It's a container of bin. So pretty much any portion you have can be contained inside the spring container. Now you can have spring container inside it as many number of object as you can see. I have defined uh, five number of object as many number of object as you can define no matter what the problem and no matter the regarding the number of objects. You can de define as many number of objects you want and then all these are mas managed by the spring container itself. Manage means it handles the instantiation of those objects, whole life cycle of this object and it handles the destruction of the life cycle of this object also. You can have object outside of the, outside of the spring container and uh, from that the, that should be uh, also handled by the spring container but it can't handle the object of outside of the spring container that means that uh, you can have object outside the container as well as in your application adding this object inside your spring container gives whole lot of advantages we are implementing and storing in order to manage object life cycle because uh, this in the object which are present in a spring container and spring is has its own uh, own of this object because uh, that means that spring knows how to create it how to destroy it and spring knows the life cycle of this object but spring container does not know the life cycle or where it is and where it comes what is this structure which are the outside objects of the spring container. Now to manage object life cycle, storing requires handles of the object it needs to be owned. It needs to know what the object is and where it is. Now it works very easily. The creation of the object is actually done by the spring. Now say the object of outside of the spring container that is dependent on the object inside the spring. Now normally if you don't use spring you would say that uh, let's take uh, this object as A and this object as B. Now inside the object A you would write that object B equals to new object B. That means if I do that the new object that gets created is not handled by the spring container. Spring does not know the object exists. Now Spring container creates object instead of writing the code new object. We are creating, uh, we are normally creates object by writing the code new, but spring container creates object without uh, writing the code new. 
you ask the spring container to instantiate this object that passes to this object. This is something called factory pattern. Now what is a factory pattern? As you can see in this uh, slide, now uh, here I have an object. This is an object and instead of uh, creating that object by me, I would ask object factory. This is an object factory. I would ask the object factory to create an object for me. Now factory pattern reads from a configuration file. There should be a configuration file or a metadata or uh, some kind of XML file that would read object factory that what type of uh, object uh, pattern is required because object would uh, tell object factory that I, rec I would record uh, object and create a new object for me. Now object factory what it does it, it reads from the configuration XML file or configuration file and it creates a new object of that and this new object is handed over to the requested object and after that the object gets its new object. Now similar to this uh, this functionality or this uh, structure Spring has also has its own structure that is called Spring Bean Factory. Now what is Spring Bean Factory is? Spring Bean Factory is similar to the uh, is similar to the factory pattern also. What it does is uh, we, we define or we ask uh, bin factory to create a new object or a new object or new spring bin you can say for me for us actually and object is request uh, to, to get a spring bin and bin factory reads from the spring xml file and we have we have to define the configurations of the various objects in the spring xml file and uh, bin factory will read from the spring xml file and it will uh, create a new spring bin and this new spring bin will be handed over to the object that is requested to for a new spring bin the advantages of creating spring bin from the bin factory because it can control or handle the life cycle of that particular object no matter whatever object you are creating from spring bin factory that both those objects will be handled or maintained by the bin factory itself. Now we code this whole concept in uh, our uh, in our projects also. Now the main method will be there in this object and the object which calls spring bin factory we came to provide have to provide the spring XML file and we have to write uh, the define our bean that needs to be created. The spring bean which is need to be created have to be defined in the spring xml and uh, after that the bin factory would uh, request spring xml and, and will read from the spring xml and create the spring bean and will hand over to the object. Now again uh, this is not a really a dependency injection but uh, this is the first step towards the spring framework coding and you have to understand the basic things of the spring bin factory and we will implement dependency injection uh, in our next tutorial uh, so i hope you have understand this the concept of spring bin factory hope you like it and thanks for watching and have a nice day